Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Hoping you all are doing well this morning. Get your alert. Had a couple cups of coffee. Whatever it takes. Um, some of you all don't drink coffee. Uh, that's a good thing. Don't get started on it because it is definitely addicting. And when you try to stop, serious headaches. Good morning, God. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for who you are, Lord God. Father, you've done so much for us, Lord, that truly, if we had 10,000 tongues, Lord God, in 10,000 years, we couldn't thank you enough, Lord God. By the time we would get to the point where we would think that we're at the end of our list, Father, you would just continue to, to do things, Lord God, continue to let us breathe, continue to give us another opportunity, Lord God, to represent you well, Lord God. Uh, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for how you protect our families, Lord God, how you watch over us, Lord God, how you provide us food, Lord God, and finances, Lord God. We may not have everything we want, Lord God, but your word says in uh, Matthew 6, 33, that if we seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, then you'll add everything we need unto us, Lord God. Again, it might not be the, the brand that we want to, to wear or the, the brand that we want to eat, Lord God, but we thank you and we praise you for food and, and provision anyway, Lord. Come to you on this morning asking that you would be with me, Lord God. I pray that the words that come out of my mouth are acceptable in your sight, Lord God. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would just lead and guide my tongue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We are going to start with Acts chapter 7 this morning. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6 and take it from there. And it reads as follows. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran and said unto him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake Nope, one through five. I'm sorry, I wrote down six and I only wanted one through five. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about this. What are we talking about? We are talking about Stephen, all right? Remember, they had all these false um, accusers that said, hey, we heard them say, you know, that Jesus of Nazareth is gonna destroy this place. And, you know, he spoke blasphemy against God and the holy place and Moses and all of that, right? And so they brought him before the council. And so don't forget now, our high priest is Annas, right? We learned that earlier. Our high priest is Annas. And so Annas is like these accusations that they're hurling against you. Are these things true? And I'm sure that Stephen, when he became a disciple of Christ, and when they appointed him as one of the deacons over the food pantry, I'm sure he never thought that it would lead him to be in the presence of the Sanhedrin and have an audience that contained the high priest. I'm sure he didn't think that. But since he has this opportunity, he is going to take this opportunity to give them the Cliff Notes version of exactly how Christianity came to be. So I'm excited about that because you can, from his um, exhortation, you can hear exactly what Christians believe. No, it's not going to go into detail, but it hits the high, um, the, it highlights um, the points, all right? So let's go ahead. Verse two, and he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran. All right, so he's saying, Council, all, all y'all together. And then he's saying, 
those who are around my age, yo, bro. All right. And then those who are older than me, I respect y'all, the elders. All right, fathers, I, I'm, I'm talking to all y'all. I want y'all to listen up. The God of glory appeared unto our father, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran. All right, Mesopotamia means between two rivers. What two rivers are we talking about? We're talking about the Euphrates and the Tigris, all right? Ur of the Chaldees was within that Mesopotamian land. Ur was actually a port city um, that was used a lot for trading. But he's saying, um, appeared unto our father, Abraham. Why is Abraham considered the father? Because he is the first one who left the pagan religions and went ahead and followed God. But he didn't do it immediately when God told him to. I don't know if you all know that or not. Let's go ahead and... Um, and keep reading. Verse three, and said unto him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land, which I shall show thee. All right, um, real quick, we have Haran with the C in front of it. Um, you will see different spellings of things. You know, I, I went through this on Facebook before dealing with like one of my sisters you at one time didn't know if her real first name was Tina Marie, all one word, or if it was two different words. You didn't even know how Tina was spelled sometimes, but that's because she changed her name that way. All right. Um, and so Haran and Turan or what have you is the same. All right. So in verse three, God told him to get out of his country and from his kindred, and come into the land that I will show thee. All right, and verse four says, then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land, wherein ye now dwell. I wanna take us over to Genesis, because this could be one of those where it's like, the Bible is contradictory. That ain't what it said in Genesis. So if we go to Genesis chapter 11 and we start at verse 27, we're going to read for a while. All right. And then we'll come back and discuss it. It says, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father, Terah, in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right. Um, we're going to keep reading for a minute. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot with, with, went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. All right. So Abram is Abraham. We talked about that before. And Sarai is Sarah. God changed their names. Okay. But what we see here in verse 31 is it says, and Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees. All right. So in the account that we just read in Acts, 
it says that God told him to leave his kindred and, and all of that, right? Um, and, and it says that's what he did. Well, he did, but here it says Terah took them. So what is concluded is that Abram was like, Yo, dad, um, me and Sarah, we, we got to go. God told us to go, you know, don't know where, but we're heading out. And um, Haran, Tara's other son, had already passed away. Lot's daddy um, had already passed away. So you can see Tara saying, yo, hold up. Uh -uh, I done lost one already. And you talk about you don't know where you're going and all of that. Oh, no, no, we can all leave this place together. You know, if this pagan religion or economy or whatever is the issue, fine, we can all pick up together. And it says that they headed to the land of Canaan. And it's interesting how you can be told to do something and you don't know necessarily what God has planned, but others can come and they can confirm what God has planned and actually give you more details because they were actually headed to the land that God was going to give Abraham anyway. But he did tell him to get away from his people. All right. So the whole family in Genesis 11 packs up and heads out. Well, the dad ends up getting close to dying, right? And so they stop in an area. And I don't know if it was um, named Haran first, like that's where his son lived before he passed away, or if they ended up naming it Haran after they stopped there. Nevertheless, the name of the territory is the same name of Lot's daddy, all right? So they stop in Haran and Tara passes away. Once Terah passes away, then Lot picks up with his wife and he takes his nephew. Don't know if he told him to come because it said, and Lot went with him. Um, again, it could be a thing of, yo, you ain't leaving me. My granddaddy gone, my daddy gone, I'm going too, right? And you see in verse, uh, in chapter 12, verse one, it says, now the Lord had said, unto Abram. All right. He had already told him before. And so that's where you get Stephen talking about. He told him they headed out, the daddy dies, and then they go ahead and go into the land of Canaan. All right. And we see here that not only um, do they go into the land of Canaan, but they actually go farther than the land of Canaan. Um, I want it to read as well, Genesis chapter 12, verse 14. It says, nope, that's not the one I want. Darn. All right. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. Genesis 13, verse 14. It says, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, they sh then shall thy seed also be numbered. All right, and so I wanted to read this verse because Stephen was saying that God promised it to Abraham. But if you just read what it says over here in um, chapter 12, it says, uh, I will bless thee and make thee a great nation. Um, it says somewhere over here, okay, Jeff. Chapter 12, verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. So had to go find in the Bible where it actually tells, uh, where he actually tells Abram 
that he'll give it to him. Now, um, we'll go ahead and we'll end here, but people believe that this is a future prophecy because Abram dwelt in tents his entire life. He never did possess the land of Canaan. So people believe that with the Lord's second coming, that Abraham will go ahead and get his possession. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, uh, for knowing that the entire Bible is true, Lord God. We know that we have things to look forward to, Lord God, like no more tears, Father. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that to be absent from the body is to be present with you, Father. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that the sufferings of this world are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for who you are. Please be with us as we go throughout this day. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I love y'all. Bye-bye.